Just monkeying around, you know? <laughs> We're going to start with an overhand knot. This is the basis of many other knots and hitches that we will use in the future. It's quite a simple knot, and if you've ever tied your shoes, you've really created the basics of an overhand knot. If we're going to make it in a single piece of cordage, we'll take the working end and create an overhand loop. And then pass the working end through the overhand loop and you create the overhand knot. A simple variation of the overhand knot. After we've created our overhand loop, rather than passing the working end through the loop and pulling tight, instead we're going to create a bite and pass the bite through. Now when we tighten up on it, We create an overhand knot with this funny little loop hanging off the end. This has some applications. For myself, I work on stringed instruments, including violins and violas. And if I'm working with gut strings, I use this knot in the end of a fresh string to secure it in place on the instrument. Also allows us to quickly untie the knot because we've left a quick release loop. So that principle of a quick release loop formed by a bite will be with us for a long time. When we're traveling around in the bush, we often take our cordage with us. We use it for an application, and we break camp, we take our cordage with us. If you can get in the habit of turning every knot you use, if it's safe to do so, into a quick release knot, you'll be able to quickly untie, and you're ready to go. Either variation of the overhand knot, either with the quick release loop or without, is often used as a stopper knot, perhaps on the end of a drawstring, to help resist pulling through an eyelet by accident. It can also be used at the end of a knot, particularly in its original form, because the rope will stop fraying when it hits the knot. So go ahead and practice it. Lots of applications and it's one of our simplest knots that we'll be covering.